chapter 10, Jesus tells one of his most famous parables. But before that, I, I really want us to see what it was that he was thinking about and talking about and how this story came to be. If you look in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, it says this. It says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus is being tested by these teachers of the day. And they ask him a question that they would all debate from time to time. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, it says, What is written in the law? Jesus replied, How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So Jesus is being tested by these teachers, and this teacher and Jesus have a really good and positive interaction. Jesus says, well, what do you think? What do you need to do? And he says, you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you need to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, yeah, sounds right to me. But, but then this teacher takes it that next step further. And he asks a pretty fair question, if you ask me. He asks, well, who then is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Tanner? Hey, what's, what's up? Not much, man. Hey, I just have a quick question for you. Yeah? Who is your neighbor? Uh, who is my neighbor? Hmm. Uh, well, you are my neighbor because you live right next to me. But my friends can be my neighbor, just anyone I hold close to me. Love it. I am his neighbor for realsies, though. I is it someone who lives next door to me? Is it someone who's walking down the street, who is it? This word that he uses there for neighbor, it, it really just means anybody, anybody in close proximity, anybody near. And so he says, who is my neighbor? Is it, is it anybody, is it everybody? Who is it? And Jesus launches into one of his most famous Jesus begins to answer this leader's question. He does so with a story. The guy asks, who is my neighbor? Jesus launches into a story. So in Luke chapter 10, continuing on in verse 30, it says, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. Okay, so hold on right there. So Jerusalem to Jericho. This was a common road, but it also had a really crazy nickname. It was known as the Way of Blood. <laughs> what in the world? The Way of Blood. Um, meaning, it was such a, there were so many possibilities for violence or for people to be attacked um, that it was infamous. Um, it had a, a reputation as not being somewhere you would want to go. Uh, maybe you think about a bad part of town. You know, I think about uh, down not that far from our church. If you continue down Lamar past Chewy's, you get to a place in town that isn't great down around Runberg. 
And it, it, it's not a good place and it has a really bad reputation. This road had that same kind of reputation. In fact, look at what happened. It says, They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. So this guy, on his way, on his way to Jericho, gets mugged, gets beat up. And not only do they do that, but they, they like strip him. They take his clothes. They leave um, him naked and bleeding on the side of the road. It's like it wasn't enough just to take his stuff. They also take his dignity as well. This is the scene that Jesus is describing as then three different people encounter this man. talks about these three different people who encounter this man traveling on the road. Here's what he says in verse 31. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came, to the, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. These three people that Jesus describes um, do some things differently. First, the priest shows up. And uh, the priest, he's probably worried about becoming unclean and then having to go through the ritual and the process of becoming clean again. And so he just continues on. He sees the blood, knows that, um, that he will have to go through all that uh, in order to become clean again. The Levite probably thinks something very similar or, or even, you know, just thinks, oh, I'm going to be late. I'm, I, I don't have time for this. Um, both of them, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in uh, a sermon one time said, both of these men ask the question, what will happen to me if I stop and help? They think about themselves, like, what is it going to do to me if I stop and help this person? They, they don't consider him and what's happening in the situation. Instead, they consider themselves. And, and then the last person that shows up, though, it says, A Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. A, a Samaritan being someone who um, was an outcast. Um, there was some definite racial tension happening here between the Samaritans and the Jews. And it wasn't good. And it wasn't right. It was very unhealthy. And, uh, and so a Samaritan was viewed as a second-class citizen. But yet the Samaritan, when he sees the Jew, doesn't think like the priest and the Levite and ask, what will happen to me if I stop and help? Instead, Martin Luther King Jr. says that the Samaritan asks, what will happen to this man if I don't stop and help? Totally different point of view. Look at what happens next. Verse 34, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. So the Samaritan not only stops, but he helps. He treats his wounds. He puts him on his own donkey that he was using for transportation. He takes him to an inn. He pays for the inn. He continues to feed and care for this man who had been beaten up and robbed. And he pays beyond the, the stay they've already made. He goes way out of his way 
to help this person. Why? Maybe it's because he asked the question, what will happen to this man if I don't stop and help? These three have very different approaches, and they do things very differently. But one of the three does what is best. In fact, Jesus continues on and he asks the person who's testing him, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Three different people, three different perspectives, and one totally different outcome by the one who asks the right question, what will happen to this man if I don't stop and help? So what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us as the people of God? How do we do what God is calling us to, what Jesus is calling us to in this parable? Well, I think we are people who ask ourselves the difficult question, what will happen to them if I don't stop to help? What will happen to them? Not what will happen to me if I do stop and help, but what will happen to them? Who are the people in your life that you can um, be looking out for? Who are the people in your life that you can ask that question about? Who are the people that you can help? I hope that you will go and make a difference. I hope that you will be uh, just like the Good Samaritan who chose to help. Have a great day, have a great week, and I'll see you next week.